So we are on our series entitled, We Can Beat It Together. Big sabihin niya yung kaya natin tong malabanan, kaya natin tong mapagtagumpayan, kaya natin tong i-overcome if we are together. Meaning, hindi mo kakayanin kung mag-isa ka. Kakayanin natin yan kapag kasama natin ang pamilya natin. Kasama natin yung bawat mananampalataya na nininiwala sa Diyos that, at lahat ng tao na nininiwala na this crisis is just temporary. So we should be united. No, we should be united these days. Kailangan maging solid tayo ngayon as a family, as a church, as a Filipino people right now. You know what? This is our third part. Pangatlo na ho ito. We can beat it together part three na po tayo ngayon. Okay? So, the first part, gusto ko lang pong bilisan nito para sa mga hindi naka-tune in nung nakaraan, hindi nakapanood. We can beat it together. Of course, kailangan natin i-consider yung katotohanan, yung facts. And then, the facts will not we should we should not entertain facts to 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 uh, ano no parang mag, mag trigger sa atin yan to have a uh, fear in our life so we should have faith that's why wise decision no your wise decision natin na nangyayari yan kapag meron tayong facts at meron tayong faith so we can decide wise and then we have the favor of the lord in this situation in this crisis and of course family is very important no na kakayanin natin ito as a family hindi natin kaya itong malampasan kung hindi tayo magsama-sama ng mga mananampalataya at bawat Pilipino, di ba? Mamamayang Pilipino at sa buong mundo. This crisis is not just uh, to to some of the family but all over the Philippines and all over the world. This is global. You know what? This this pandemic, no, this will mark history. It will mark history. No? Sa buong sa buong Pilipinas at sa buong mundo, it has an impact. But I want you to understand that let it be known that in this world pandemic that you did not drift. No, hindi ka, hindi ka, hindi ka nag-wave. Hindi ka nag-doubt sa kayang gawin ng Diyos. Let it be known in the history of this crisis that you are faithful to the Lord. That we are obedient to the Lord. That we can still trust God in our lives. Amen. Yeah, let it be known in this generation. Let it be known in this crisis na hindi ka nanghina, na hindi ka, na hindi ka nagduda sa kayang gawin ng Diyos. I mean, are you listening here? So, yung part 2 natin, no, bibilisan ko lang to para makapunta tayo sa part 3 natin because God is for us. We can beat this together. This is just part of my review. No, This is part 2, last Sunday. We can beat this together because God is for us. If God is for us, who can be against us? Sasamahan tayo ng Diyos sa crisis na ito. Sasamahan tayo ng Lord sa pandemic na ito. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Amen. And we can beat this together, no? Because we have the word of the Lord. No, each and every one of us must be marinated with the word of God. We should be encapsulated with the word of God. Why? So that the enemy cannot interfere, so that the enemy cannot deceive us if we have the word of God. Amen. Yung, yung relief, may temporary lang yan, pero yung word ni Lord, magpakailan man yan. Amen? And of course, we can beat it together if we make faith works. So, may pananampalataya tayo na dapat naka-activate. May, mga, may pananampalataya, pero kung hindi naman active yan, kapatid, no? kailangan i-activate natin yung mga pananampalataya natin just like a parachute, di ba? Nandyan, nakasuot, pero kapag hindi mo inactivate hindi gagana. That's what like faith is all about. And then we should be united in prayer regardless regardless of of our beliefs regardless regardless na kung ano man ang sitwasyon mo ngayon we, we we should be united I'm calling all the Filipino people regardless of your of your of your dialect di ba isang Pilipino ho tayo isang mamayang Pilipino let us unite in prayer because all the scientists no the doctors the expert they don't have they don't have the the cure for this but we one thing we know that God has the cure. This situation is uncontrollable. That's why they have this lockdown. They have this quarantine. But you know what? We come to the point, man come to the point that he cannot, he cannot make a solution to this pandemic. But always remember, people is limited but God is unlimited. If this situation is beyond our control, God is in control. We can overcome through the power of the blood of Jesus. 
It's mentioned in Exodus. No, the spirit of death cannot come because the, do, the blood of Jesus, the blood of the lamb that has been poured out on the, on the doorpost that the enemy cannot, cannot come. So we should apply and believe the power of the blood of Jesus in our lives. So we can win it's by winning our family. So we will not be we will not be reluctant and we will not be out of focus that this time God wants us to win our family. That, that this time God wants to restore our family. The relationship will be restored to God. And in the relations of every, of every members of the family. So we can be it together if we, if we do it together as a family. I would just like to, to start, no? Dito sa ating message ngayon. That's just part of my review. Especially to those who, who were able to tune in na ngayon lang po na, na nakatune, no? Ito na po yung We Can Beat It Together, no? Part 3. You know why? I, I entitled this We Can Beat It Together. Haba pong nag kami while we are, we are, I know, we are fixing this, these sled walls and keyboard and drum set, no? We are so... Uh, grateful to the Lord and by the grace of God no bago nangyari itong lockdown and quarantine meron po tayong gamit dito sa bahay sa bodega yung po yung ginamit natin and while we are fixing then I saw a t-shirt two t-shirt na binigay ni Daddy Paul nung pumunta ako doon nakalagay doon we can beat it together and it struck me no nung una nakita ko na we can beat it together I just saw it and then I put it in our in our room no and then Nung, when, 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 nung nakahiga na ako, I just saw it again. And it struck me most. Then I pray, Lord, ito, is it the word that you want me to preach? Is it the word, Lord God, that we can, that we can, that, we, that I can encourage people through these words or to this, yes, we can beat it together. And God speak to me. Yes. That's why I'm preaching it to you right now. Amen. Thanks. Kay Daddy Paul, no, na naka, naka, na-overcome niya yung tatlong bypass at dalawang bulb na palit. Come on, pwede ba natin palakpakan si Lord? If you are watching, Daddy Paul, God bless you. We love you so much. And Mami Mila, that's our pastor. Amen. So, this is a crisis. We are in a crisis. We are in a pandemic situation. That's the fact. But I want you to understand in every crisis, this is not just a national crisis, but a global crisis. There is a story in the Bible when they experience a national crisis in their time. Yun yung time, that's the time of uh, King Saul. Nung na, na, namumuno si King Saul, no, in Israel, that there is a national crisis. The greatest crisis during the time of King Saul's reign. When he was the king in Israel, there, there is this national crisis. So somehow you have an idea. No, wait, crisis now. What, what is that crisis? You know, this is the crisis, crisis that, uh, this is the giant Goliath. There is, a, there is a Goliath, a giant, who is taunting, no? maligning the God of Israel and all the armies of Israel. That's their national crisis. And I want you to understand that David raised up, was, was, was known through this crisis. The man, David was raised up by God in this crisis. Alam nyo, sa bawat crisis na nangyayari, sa bawat generation, sa bawat pandemic, may itinuturo ang Diyos at may, may inire-raise up si Lord sa bawat generation. You know what? Israelites, Israel, and King Saul himself and all his army are afraid. Takot na takot sila. They are afraid of this giant Goliath. Because if you will go into look at Goliath, no, he was trained from, from, from childhood and even right now he's a full-grown, he's a full-grown warrior. And he keep, keep on taunting Israel, the army of the living God and the king. But you know what? I want you to understand. God is just preparing a David during that time. We 
we can beat it together, number one. If you are taking, taking down notes, if you are taking down notes right now, preparation. Come on, say preparation. We can beat it together if we have a right mindset. If we have a right perspective in our lives. If we embrace God's preparation. No, we will never be discouraged. We will never be misguided. And we will never be deceived of our situation right now. Because during that time, during that, during that national crisis in the, in, in the, in the, in the life of Israel, so Israel, when, when Saul is the king, God is just preparing David. Amen. Are you listening? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, inihahanda ka lang ng Diyos. God is just preparing us. Amen. Every generation experienced Christ to raise up a mighty man of God. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, you are a mighty man of God. You are a mighty woman of God. Every generation experienced Christ is to raise up man of God. A hero. See, David was considered as a hero during the time. Come on, let's read the Bible. Let's open our Bible in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 6 or 16, verse 8 to 10 and to the following verses. This is very important, you know. Papaano how, how God started to, to prepare David during this, during this crisis, during, during their national crisis during the time in their generation. Verse, this is, this is the calling of David. How God called David through, through the prophet Samuel. I will just going to read this very fast. No? And if you have your Bible, open your Bible. If you have an electronic Bible, then open it. And then read it with, read it with me. With faith. Amen. It says here, then Jesse called Abinadab. This is, this is the time that uh, Samuel came to... to to the house of uh, Jesse because God's God speak to Samuel he's about to anoint a new king of Israel because God has already rejected Saul during that time and of course if you are Jesse then you will you 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 would think in your mind that the next king of course you will going to consider it in a physical appearance no kaya ang prepare niya una una no, in verse 8, sabi, then Jesse called Abinadab and had passed in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this either. Ba? So makikita, si Eliab muna, nauna. Si Eliab, Abinadab, and then si Shama. So they were rejected. Kasi si Lord, hindi tumitingin sa abilidad. Ang tumitingin si Lord sa kondisyon ng puso. Amen. In fact, in this, is the least. Si David was the least. Kasi nga, hindi nga nila, hindi nga naisip ng tatay niya. Sumagi man lang sa isip niya na siya ay pakikinga o siya ay consider. In fact, Jesse's mind, no? He did not come to the point in his mind that David is, is the next king. That's why the prophet was able to ask. No? Nagtanong muna. Tinanong pa in verse 11. So he asked Jesse, the prophet Samuel, are these all the sons you have? There is, tingnan nyo, are these your sons you have? Ito, ito ba lahat yung mga anak mo? David was almost forgotten. Are you listening? He's not the first choice. But he's God's choice. I'm telling you today, maybe you are not the first choice, but what is important, you are God's choice. If God choose you, He will prepare you. Amen. So, and then, verse 12. Oh, verse 11. I will just continue. So, he asked Jesse, Are these all your sons you have? They're still the youngest. Jesse answered, He's tending the sheep. Samuel said, Send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. Wow. Grand entrance. <laughs> They, they remain standing until this young boy, David, arrived, came. Verse, verse 13. So Samuel took the horn. Look, listen to this. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brother. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. 
Did you hear that? When he was anointed by the prophet, when David was anointed by the prophet, in the presence of his brother, in the presence of his father, the spirit of the Lord came to him on that day on. He was anointed as the next king. Pero sinong nakakaalam? Of course, Prophet Samuel, his brother, and father, and his father. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him in power on that day on. I want you to take note on that. That's part of his preparation. David was anointed by the prophet Samuel. The Spirit of the Lord came to him in power. Sabi natin, in power. Without the Spirit of God, there is no power in the lives of a believer. That's why we need the Spirit of God in this, in this crisis, in this situation. God anoints David for a purpose. God will not anoint a person for nothing. Listen to me. God anoints David for a purpose. God will not anoint a person for nothing. Hindi ya anoint ng Diyos ang isang tao na para wala lang. Are you listening? The purpose of the anointing is to empower a person to do a noble mission for God. That's the very purpose of it. The very purpose of anointing David, no? The purpose of the anointing is to empower David to do a noble job. Mission. Nagaling kay Lord. David was anointed to accomplish God's given assignment in his generation. During that crisis, there is a man that is being prepared. That's being anointed by the man of God. And he was anointed to do the noble task. To do a noble job for the Lord. David was anointed to accomplish God's given assignment in his generation. I want you to understand this. We need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We need to prepare ourselves because after this crisis, let us see this crisis as an opportunity for God to raise up a man just like David in his generation and David in our generation. Amen. In fact, in Acts chapter 13, verse 36 says, Now, when David had served God's purpose in his generation, he fell asleep and he was buried with his ancestors. Tingnan nyo. Bago nawala, bago namatay si David, he was able to fulfill God's given assignment sa buhay niya. In his generation. He was able to fulfill his purpose in his own generation. Kailan sa pinrepare? When he was prepared. When, 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 when God called him during the time of crisis. That crisis is about to happen. Are you listening? There are David that is being born right now. That is being prepared by God. Because I do believe in past preaching. No, sa mga nakarawa, sa nakarang dalawa kong preaching. No, yung part 1, part 2. I strongly believe. Especially in part 1. I strongly believe that after this crisis. After this pandemic. There is a great revival that is about to happen. There is a great harvest that is about to happen right now. That's why we should really understand this. That God is just preparing us. He did not lock us down for nothing. He locked us down in a quarantine like this, a community quarantine, because God is preparing us. God is preparing you. God is preparing you. Amen. Because our preparation determines our performance. Our preparation today in this lockdown, in this community quarantine, will determine our performance after this. Kung paano mo hinahanda ang sarili mo ngayon uh, while in this lockdown, while in this community quarantine, will going to determine how you will going to perform, how you will going to, to serve the Lord, how you will going to see the result of this confinement. Let us embrace God's preparation in this crisis, in this community or lockdown. Our preparation determines our probability of success. Our preparation 
determines our probability of success. So while we are preparing ourselves, this will determine how success we will going to experience the probability of our success. Eh, nasa tahanan ka. Huwag ka lang manood ng Netflix. Huwag ka lang, ma- huwag ka lang mag-tiktok ng mag-tiktok, di ba? Si Lord kumakatok, di ba? Ikaw nag-tiktok, di ba? Are you listening? Si Lord kumakatok sa puso mo, kumakatok sa'yo, pero busy ka sa kaka-tiktok. It's good to do your TikTok pero may message pa rin para makapag-win. It's good to do your TikTok, use it, the technology. Gamitin mo yung uso ngayon para makapag para makapag-influence na lahat ay manalangin, lahat ay umibig kay Lord na hindi magreklamo kundi manampalataya. I'm calling all the the believers or those who are watching right now, hindi naman masamang mag-TikTok. Kasi nakakainip pero bigyan mo na ng mensahe to encourage people. Are you listening here? Amen. I love you, lahat ng mga nagtitiktok dyan. Pero bigyan nyo ng laman. Amen. Give an essence so that people will be encouraged, not be discouraged, and they will be more closer to the Lord. Because our preparation determines our probability of success. You know what? In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 34 to 36, I will be mentioning this to, to give a foundation to our, to, our, to our points and to our topic today. But David said, I'm reading on 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 34 up to 36 in NIB version. But David said, so, your servant. Do pa yata itong notes ko, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried out the sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair and struck it and killed it. You know, you know. Your servant, verse 36, your servant was, oh, your servant, verse 36 na tayo, paki, paki sa 36, yeah. And I have done this to both lions and the bear. I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too. For he had defied the armies of the living God. Tingnan nyo. This challenge in his life is just a preparation. When you were able to, to defeat these lions and bear, it's just a practice. Sabi natin, practice. Yung maliliit na, na problema, yung maliliit na, actually, hindi maliit to. This is not small, this is big, di ba? It's a lion and a bear. Those challenges that you have overcome, those crises before this pandemic come or happen, you are already, you are able to overcome those things just like David. That's why this, this verse First Samuel chapter 17, 34 to 36, it's just David's practice. Why? Because one day he will go to face a giant. Amen? So God is just preparing David. When, 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 when he confront those, both lion and bears, to protect the sheep of his father, he did not, he did not, he did not run out, but he confronted it. Little he don't know that God is preparing David. Akala ni David, ganun lang yon. You know what? Yung preparation ni David nung bata, hindi naglalaro ng tumbang preso, hindi naglalaro ng computer games, hindi naglalaro ng kung ano-ano, hindi nanonood ng TV, hindi nanonood ng Netflix. Siya ka agad, nandun siya, nag, nagtatrabaho na siya. He was working for his father. He was faithfully tending the ship of his father. Why I'm sharing, why, why I was able to, to say he's faithfully attending, looking. Imagine, there are a lot of sheep, no? marami naman siya ginaalagaan, pero bakit kapag kinuha yung isa, lalapain ng leon at ng oso, bakit kinukuha pa niya? Why? Because he's faithful on the small obligation and on the small 
job that his that, that was father that that his father gave him. He was faithful in the small responsibilities that he has during that moment. Little he don't know that God is preparing David, no, to to shepherd the whole Israelites, the whole Israel. So your faithfulness in small things will qualify you to big things. Your faithfulness in small things, especially in crisis, will qualify you for bigger things in the future. Just like what David did. He is faithfully tending the sheep of his father. He did not allow those lions and bear to kill and to tear down the sheep of his father. But he protect them. Amen. If you are found faithful in small things, God will going to give you greater things in the future. Embrace God's preparation. David was faithfully tending the sheep of his father. David protect the sheep from the bear and the lion. Those who are cell leaders right now, we should protect our members. We should protect the cell member right now. In this crisis, the enemy is looking for something he may debar. Ang una niyang gagawin, magpapanik. Ang una niyang gagawin, magkakaroon ng takot. Ang una niyang gagawin, he will inject negativity in their mind. Cell leaders and pastors who are watching on live stream right now, let us protect our cell members. Let us protect God's people. If we are praying for multitude right now, let us do our part right now in protecting them, in taking care, in training them. Use the most out of it, the technology right now. David's preparation, build his skills. This preparation, build David's skills. During the time of crisis, no, tingnan mo yan as part of your preparation because God wants to build the skills. Pag-aralan mo yung SYNL, pag-aralan mo yung, yung starting up your new life, pag-aralan mo yung life class, pag-aralan ka ng SOL, then one pastor evangelist, pag-aralan mo yan, build the skills. And those who are doing business right now, start to, to, start to pray, Lord, give me an idea. Prepare me for the greater things that you that you have prepared ahead of me so that I can connect, so that I can comprehend, so that I can walk according to the path that you have already prepared for me. Amen. David's preparation built his skills. And not just his skills, but his character. Imagine if you will go into read his story. He was called by 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 the king to, to play the harp in the palace because he is anointed, no? Musician. Every time he play, the demons come out. Dun sa kay Saul. But when he go out, when he go home, he went again to tend the sheep of his father. Ganun siya. Hindi siya, hindi siya sinabi sa tatay niya, oh dad, I am, I am promoted, you know what? I, I work in the palace. You know what? I, it's 2 a.m. in the morning. I, I, I just finished it. So, can you please uh, send somebody to take care for your sheep right now because I have a new job. No, David was not like that. You can read your Bible. After he go to the palace to play, he, he, he go home. And after that, he go to the field to watch over for his partnership. Konting promotion, konting pera, huwag kang yumabang. Always remember that God is just preparing our character just like David. He did not say to his father, Dad, I serve the king in the palace as a musician. Please, find the person to tend for your ship. He did not say that. In fact, when his father, unong yung tatay niya, yung tatay niya, inutusan siya na pumunta sa labanan to bring, to bring cheese, to bring, to bring bread and butter, no, to, to, to food to his brothers dun sa, dun sa labanan in the war zone. Imagine that. I want you to take note on this. 
before David left the ship, he talked for someone. He took, he talked for someone, and he delegated to tend the ship of his father. Hindi siya basta umalis. May kinausap siya. Aalis ako, inutusan ako na tatay, pwede ka muna mag- mag-alaga ng mga tupa ni tatay. So he's a very responsible person. Hindi siya pabaya. Yun, sa panahon ng crisis yun. Ah. Ito, inutusan siya ng tatay niya and then sumunod siya. That's what the story begin. Of course, marami, the life of David is, is uh, uh, very, very, it has a very, very uh, long story but I, I, I would just like to focus on this. The crisis when Israelites, Israel have no much to Goliath. And then, here comes David, pumunta na siya dun sa labanan, sa war zone, nakita niya, nagpanting yung tenga niya. Who is this Philistine? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He is, he is saying words, no? parang, kinukot siya niya. Kinukot siya niya yung bayan ng Diyos, yung sundalo ng Diyos, yung bayan ng Panginoon. Pero hindi basta-basta tinanggap ni David yun. Nagpanting yung tenga niya. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? And you know what? You know what happened? David volunteered himself. Sabi natin, volunteer. Binolunteer niya yung sarili niya. Lahat takot. All the people are afraid. No, up to the point na nagchichil sila, naga, nanginginig sila dahil takot na takot sila, wala silang maiharap. Wala silang pantapat kay Gulayat. But here comes the boy who is prepared by God, who is anointed by God. Hallelujah! He volunteered himself, I will fight! Grabe no? Paano yung bubulter yung sarili mo? Pa- ang liit mo eh. David is, in, is nobody in the eyes of the people. But with the eyes of God, he's somebody. Are you listening? In the eyes of the people, David is nobody. But in the eyes of God, David is somebody. Parang ikaw, sa tingin mo ngayon, malit ka lang, nasa bahay ka lang, ganito ka lang, embrace God's preparation in your life. At kailangan magbo-volunteer ka. Kailangan, kailangan in this situation, no, kailangan meron tayong initiative. Amen. Are you listening right now? So, what happened? Yung lahat ng tao, all the people are in chaos. The people, or the, the, the atmosphere is full of fear. Even the king, even the armies of Israel are in fear, are in crisis. A national crisis during that moment. But there is one boy who was anointed, who was prepared by God. Who volunteer. Amen. Are you listening here? There are a lot of negative, negative words, gossip, uh, uh, words that will that will make the people panic. And you know what? David has a wisdom. The only person who can who can who can permit me to fight this Goliath one to one is the king. And you know what? Pumunta sa king. He went to the king. Per Samuel. Chapter 17, verse 42 to 43. He looked David over and saw that he was little more than a boy. Glowing with health and handsome. And he despised him. Imagine, sumama to. Pumunta to doon, sabi sabi niya. Oh, who is this boy? You, you mean that you will go into fight Goliath? Goliath is a mighty warrior. He was trained since childbirth, since his adolescence, as a mighty warrior. And you are just a boy. Are you listening? In the eyes of the king, this is just an ordinary boy. This is just an ordinary person. This is just a nobody. But in the eyes of God, Oh, this boy is somebody. 
Parang ikaw ngayon, nag- tinitingin mo sa sarili mo, wala kang magagawa. Nandiyan ka lang sa bahay, nandiyan nanonood, na, na kung ano-ano mga ginagawa. Embrace God's preparation, mga kapatid. At huwag tayong sumabay sa takot. Huwag tayong sumabay sa mga, sa mga, sa mga negative things, but we should provide solution. We should volunteer ourselves. We should pray to God. We should ask God for a solution for this. And we should help people. And you know, verse 43 said, He said to David, Oh no, no, no. Ito pala yung ano, yung, yung nandun na sa battle. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 42, when, when, when he was in the battle, no? Nandun na siya sa battle. Yung ating, ano, yung ating projector, mga kapatid, no? o yung ating control sa okay para masundan natin para masundan ko ilook at David ito sabi ni ito sabi ni ano ito sabi ni ni, ni Goliath ito na yun because David was con- already convinced the king to fight this Goliath no at ito na ito na yung na, sa battle zone na to sa battle zone na he looked David over and saw that he was a little boy And glowing, ayan sabi niya, verse 43, he said to David, ito sabi ni Goliath, Am I a dog? Ayan sabi niya. Aso ba ako? Sabi niya. That you came with me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his God. Imagine that. Humarap siya kay David, no? Ano, ang bata naman na ito, itong, uh, itong ilalaban niyo sa akin? Are you listening here? Apo sabi niya, bakit? Aso ba ako? Am I a dog? May dala-dala kang stick? Pampalo? Kaya, tandaan natin, be careful in declaring words during these trying moments, this crisis, this battle. Because the very word of Goliath make a de- declaration of his defeat. Did you hear that? The very word of Goliath proclaim his defeat. But he said, am I a dog? We all know the story. Goliath lost the fight. Not because of the stone, but because of his proclamation to himself. Why? He declared to his very own mouth, am I a dog? And in the, in the history of David, CA, diba yung kanyang biodata, he is Dipitin, lion, and a bear. Yung mga leon at oso, eto na yung pangatlo, yung aso. Kaya in this trying moments, we can, we can overcome the situation. We can beat it together if we have a right proclamation. If we have a right declaration. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, declare right in this situation. Dapat maging tama yung ating mga sinasabi. We should declare positive things. We should declare life in this. We should declare ideas. We should declare faith in this in this situation. Declaring your faith can turn your crisis into opportunity. Declaring faith can turn your crisis into opportunity. Don't, don't, don't say and don't declare negative things. People will panic and you will be panicking. And then, fear comes. When faith comes, fear lives. When faith comes, fear lives. Kapag pumasok yung pananampalataya, aalis yung pagdududa. Faith is developed when we proclaim what we believe to happen and apply it. Faith is developed when we proclaim. Sabi natin, proclaim. 
Again, proclaim. Faith is developed when we proclaim, when we declare what we believe to happen and apply it. Doon po nagsisimula yan. I want you to understand this. Let it be known in the history of this crisis. You did not lose hope. You did not waver. You did not allow fear to control you, to stop you, to stop us in these trying days, in this crisis. Let it be known in the history of this crisis, of this pandemic, of this coronavirus, that hindi ka nang hina, hindi ka, hindi ka sumablay, hindi ka nagduda sa kayang gawin ng Panginoon. Nagpatuloy kang naglilingkod. Nagpatuloy yung pag-ibig mo sa Panginoon. Nagpatuloy ang pag mo sa Panginoon. Yan si David. Pinroclaim niya. Anong pinroclaim ni David? God will going to give you into my hands. Yan ang declaration niya. Are you listening? Itong, itong coronavirus na to, itong crisis na to, mag-declare tayo, malapit ka na. Matapos. Ang Diyos ang may kakayanan. Ang Diyos ay may awa. God is just want us to see that we kneel down and we trust God. Not the wealth, not the ability, not the intelligence, but God alone. Kaya, we can beat this together when we embrace God's preparation. We can beat this together if we have a right proclamation and declaration in our lives, in our situation daily. Number three, we can beat it together if every one of us will perform. Sabi natin, perform. You know what? Verse 34 and 36 is just David's practice. Because one day, he will go into face Goliath. Yung sitwasyon natin ngayon, mga kapatid, no, pini-prepare lang tayo ng Lord. We should, we, should, we should be careful on proclaiming and declaring things. Because that's just part of God's preparation in our lives. In the, lives of, in the life of David, makikita natin, mga kapatid, no? yung, palang, yung palang talunin niya yung leon, yung palang talunin niya yung mga oso, yung, alagaan, yung alaga niya, kukunin niya, it's just a preparation, it's just a practice. When he faced Goliath, that's the main fight. Are you listening? Are you listening here? Kung noon niligtas ka ni Lord yung sa mga sakit na dapat namatay ka na, na napahama ka na, kung noon niligtas ng Diyos yung buhay mo, binago ng Panginoon ang buhay mo, kung noon pinagaling ka ni Lord sa, sa malalang karamdaman, dun sa mga sitwasyon na napakahirap, I want you to understand, if God save you, if God rescue you from that moment, He can rescue us, He can save us in this crisis. Amen. Amen. Kung meron tayong aalalahanin sa mga pagkakataong ito, alalahanin natin yung kabutihan ng Diyos. Alalahanin natin na yung, yung pagliligtas ng Diyos. Alalahanin natin yung, yung, yung kung paano tayo kinilusa ng Diyos. Kung paano tayo sinave ni Lord. Kung paano tayo kinuha mula doon sa kadilim at inayos ang buhay natin papunta sa liwanag. Facing the lion, facing the bear is just David exercise and the final moment the final battle when he faced this Goliath who proclaimed to himself that he is just a dog and with the track record of David he defeated Aso or Oso Leon and then this Goliath declared to himself that he is a Aso he is a dog Pasok siya doon sa criteria na pat napatumba niya. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, babasahin ko lang ito na ulit. 34 to 36. But David said to Saul, Your servant has been keeping his sheep. When a lion and a bear came and carried up a sheep from the flock, I went after it and struck it, and I rescued the sheep from his mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair and struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both lions and bear. So this, this moment, nung nandun siya sa harap, when he was in front of this of the king, so Saul is asking, oh, what is your, what, what, what do you do? So it is in happening, this is this what, what he said. When the lion and the bear try to harm, 
and to kill my sheep. I will go after them. I will open their mouth. I will get the, my sheep in their mouth. Look, look at that. Tingnan nyo yun, mga kapatid. Ganun katindi. He performs. Yung natutunan niya nang nandun na sa oras ng labanan, hindi siya nangupete. Hindi siya naduwap. He did not, he did not say, oh, jo- that's only a joke. No, no. He declared, I come to you in the name, he proclaimed, I come to you in the name of the God of Israel, whom you defy. God will going to hand you over into my hand. When, when, when they are in the front of the battle, no, the, the war zone, imagine what people think, what people has in their mind. It's a mismatch. Sabi natin, mismatch. Parang ngayon, di ba? Ang daming Pilipino, kukunti resources, mismatch. Are you listening? Ganito ang laban, ano? O ito, dyan. But you know what? The battle belongs to the Lord. If we will just going to perform right, we will see the right result in this in this crisis, in this pandemic. When all of of all of David's preparation, inilabas siya lahat yon nung nado na sa harap niya si Goliath. There's no shadow of doubt that God will abandon him. There is no a shadow of doubt that the that this that this giant Goliath will 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 not. Di ba hindi yung hindi niya may papatumba ito. Boom boom puso niya, boom boom loob niya. He's ready to perform. He's ready to fulfill. He's ready. He's ready to do. He's ready to obey the Lord. Hello, are you listening here? Nama yeah, kapatid. Sa atin ngayon yung mga training na na tutunan natin yung mga salita ng Diyos na nasa isip natin, na nasa puso natin, ngayon natin nilabas. Ngayon tayo mag-perform as a disciple and a believer of our Lord Jesus Christ. That we are not intimidated with that giants. That we are not intimidated with this coronavirus. We, we, this virus, this pandemic will not stop us fulfilling God's mandate that He has given to each and every one of us to share the gospel to the people, to win people, to make them disciples of Jesus. We will go in to use our resources. We will go in to use everything that God has given in our hands to bring people to Jesus, closer to Jesus. Amen. Are you listening here? <laughs> David faces Goliath at, on his own strength, but by God's strength. Amen. David fight the giant because of his love and concern for his nation. Yung po yung ano niya eh. When he hear that Goliath is taunting the, 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 the armies of the living God and even the king. No, there's something. There's something that struck him. And he even mentioned the word, is there not a cause? We need to fight with the cause. Sabihin, bakit mo lalabanan ito? Bakit mo encourage yung mga tao? Bakit mo tutuloy pa rin ang discipleship? Bakit tuloy pa rin yung online G12 meeting? Bakit tuloy pa rin yung, yung online, yung online SOL? Bakit tuloy pa rin yan? Ay, because there is a cause to save people, to save humanity. There are a lot of David right now who is listening. You are at your house. Yes, you are locked in. Your physical thing, your, our body is locked in, but we won't stop those, this situation to limit us because we have an unlimited God. Amen. David fight. Declare that God will give him a victory. Hindi lang basta lumaban si ano, sige, lalaban ako, bahala na ako, mananalo ako. Hindi. David fight and declare that God will give him a victory. Yun ang performance level. Yung lalabang ka, hindi yung wala kang kasiguraduhan kung mananalo ka. 
Yung alam mong pinrepare ka ni Lord, yung alam mong tinrain ka ng Panginoon, and then there is this crisis, then there is a guarantee to perform, there is a guarantee of success, not because you are trained, not because you are you are equipped, but because God will give us the victory. God will going to give us the victory. God will, we can beat this, we can beat this together. Amen. Kakayanin natin to. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, kakayanin natin to. Sabi mo sa sarili mo, kaya ko to. We can be this together. Amen. Magsama-sama po tayo. Let us overcome fear by faith. Fear becomes real if you only believe it. Listen to that. Fear becomes only real if you only believe it. Pag pinaniniwalaan mo, yung takot sa kalang magiging totoo. That's why we choose to believe on God rather than on our situation. Because God never changes and our situation is temporary. It will change. Kaya dapat huwag maapektuhan yung performance mo as a said leader. Huwag maapektuhan yung performance mo as a, as a pastor, as a, as a disciple, as a follower of Jesus Christ. In this crisis, it should not affect, affect our performance. Amen. Of course, we are limited no, to balance it out. We are limited in some sources, but we should maximize the things that God has given us. That's why in this in this situation right now, so, sa biyaya po ng Diyos, binigyan tayo ng ledwell. That's why nakaledwell po tayo. Maraming salamat, by the way, kay Rodel, kay Jonas. Yan, ito po yung mga uh, behind the scene. Ayan, si AJ, nandyan sila. Ayan, si Justin. Ayan, si Mark. O si, si LJ, si AJ, si Ibon. Imagine that. Alam nyo, meron din tayo mga frontliner sa church. Yan po yung mga musician natin. But thank God, most of them uh, live in our house. At yung iba, oh, nandiyan lang sa kapitbahay. At yung iba, nandiyan sa baba. Pwede ba natin parakpakan yung mga frontliners ng church ngayon? You know what? Sa lahat po ng churches, yung mga nagagadar na pumupunta po ng mga musician, frontliner po rin yan. Amen. At yung mga pastor na pumupunta sa church nila para mag, mag-live, yung hindi nakapag-set up sa bahay po punta ng church, frontliner po rin yun kasi lumalabas din po. Pwede mo ba natin palakpakan si Lord sa buhay po nila? And you know what? Fear lives when faith comes. 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 13. I'm about to close right now. This one of the reason. This is one of the reason why David was able to overcome, was able to convince the king to fight Goliath. And this is one of the very reason why he was able to defeat Goliath. Verse 13. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brother. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David powerfully. Simula po nung oras na yon, simula nung mga panahon na yon, na inanoint siya yung Espiritu ng Diyos na kay David. The Spirit of the Lord came on David powerfully. The Spirit of the Lord came upon David powerfully on that day on. That's why he was able to convince the king to fight this Goliath. Imagine, if you are the king, you will allow David to fight the Goliath. Without the anointing of God, without the anointing of, the, of God in the life of David, he cannot do that. He cannot convince the king. Are you listening here? We need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We need the anointing of God in this crisis. Amen. And he was able to defeat Goliath because of the anointing of the power of God who works in him. When he was anointed by God. The, when, when, the, when he was anointed by the man of God, Samuel, and the Spirit of God came to him powerfully on that day on. The Spirit of God enabled David to go after Goliath. The Spirit of God guided his ways towards Goliath. The Spirit of God strengthened David's heart to face this Goliath. The Spirit of God enabled David to defeat this Goliath. Yan yan mga kapatid. Yung Spirit ng Diyos na kay David yun ang tumulak sa kanya at tumulong sa kanya para harapin niya na walang duda, na walang takot itong si, itong si, itong si Goliath. 
when faith comes, fear leaves. He did not listen to negative people. He did not focus on how big Goliath was. He set his eyes on how big God is. Ulitin ko yan mga kapatid. He did not focus on how big his Goliath was. Oh, he did not focus on how big Goliath was. He set his eyes on how big God is. Ulitin ko. He did not focus on how big Goliath was. He set his eyes on how big God is. Hindi siya natakot sa laki ni Goliath. Kundi mas nakita niya yung laki ng Diyos na sumasa kanya na kayang magpatumba sa higanting ito. We should focus on how big is our God, not on how big is the pandemic. Tingnan natin yung laki ng Diyos na kayang sumulusyon. Huwag nating tingnan yung laki ng epekto ng, ng pagka-damage or devastating effect of this pandemic. But focus our eyes on how big is our God. Amen. We can beat it together. I would just like to sing this song because, you know, There are a lot of voices during the time of David. Di mo kaya yan. Nagalit pa nga yung kapatid niya. Even his own brother. Don't believe on him. That he was able to defeat this Goliath. His, his brother said, oh, Go home! You conceited boy, go home! He did not believe on David. And even, and even, and even Saul during, the, during it. Oh, you're just a boy. May gatas ka pa sa labi. And there are a lot of people who are shocked. Oh! Wala na ba tayo may pantatapat kay Goliath? Ang liit naman, bata! There are a lot of negative. There are a lot of words roaming around him. But David only listened to the voice of truth. David only listened to the voice of truth. To the voice of God. Alam mo mga kapatid, marami man tayo mga naririnig ngayon. Papaano na, hindi na natin makakayanan ito. Papaano na, pinabayaan na yata tayo ng Lord. Bakit ganito, tinawag tayo ng Diyos. Bakit ganito nangyayari? Kaparusahan ba ito, mga ganito, ganyan? Baka mamamatay na lahat. It's the end of the world. I'm telling you today, we can beat it together if we will embrace God's preparation. If we will proclaim and declare what we want to see and what we want to happen. Those are positive things. And during this moment, it's time to perform. Hindi tayo, hindi tayo matatakot, hindi tayo magne-negative, di ba? We will perform. Why? Because David was anointed by God. You're anointed by God. God did not anoint you for nothing. He anointed each and every one of us to do something great in our generation. Amen? So don't believe the lies. Don't believe negative things. Don't believe those words that will tempt you to doubt the things that God has already prepared in advance for us to do. Come on, let's sing this song. Let us believe on the voice of truth. Come on. Oh, what I would do to have kind of faith it takes to climb up a vagina onto the crashing waves to step out of my comfort zone to the realm of the unknown where Jesus is and he's holding out his hand when the waves are calling out my name and they laugh at me Reminding me Come on, if you are at home, come on, just stand on your feet. Come on, just worship the Lord wherever you are right now. telling me time and time again, Lord, you never win. You never win. But the voice of truth.
There's a voice of doubt. There's a voice of panic. There's a voice of fear. But the voice of truth, we can make it. We can beat it together. Come on, sing this song. To God of Israel takes a stand before the child. We just sing and song. Surrounded by the sound of a thousand warriors. Shaking in the armor. Wishing they have the strength to stand. The child is calling out my name. This giant of pandemic. to listen right now. There are a lot of voices that surround us. Those voices want us to fear, want us to panic. Those voices will affect us if we will go into entertainment. But there is a voice that will encourage us, that will keep us on focusing on God, that will, that will help us to believe more on God. That will, that will say that it's just temporary. Look on the permanent God who is in control on this situation. We will go into see a victory. We will go into proclaim a victory. Amen. There is a victory that is about to happen in our lives. This season, this pandemic, this crisis is temporary. But the victory that comes from God, our relationship with God must not be affected by this pandemic. Don't doubt the things that God can do in our situation. Amen. God is just preparing us to be a better person. God is just dealing something in, in every heart, in our hearts. We just, we just, we just need to identify it. Yeah, identify lang natin yan. Parang kinakausap ka ng Lord. That we should, that we should come to the point of, of realization. And we should identify how we live our lives. Yung paano mo ginawa? Paano mo ginagawa yung buhay mo? Is it, is it what you do is giving glory to the Lord? O umasa ka sa lakas mo at kakayanan mo? We can have a victory in this crisis that because you are strong, you, are, you have the ability, ikaw ay mayaman, we can experience this victory in this coronavirus because God is with us. God is for us. Come on, let's sing that song. There's a victory, amen. Amen. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. Come on, if you're at home, come on, sing with us. When the darkness falls, it won't breathe. There's a lyrics. Come on, believe this. Because the God I serve knows only how to try And my God will never fail. Amen. Declare it. Yes, my God will never fail. Whatever you are, declare it right I'm now. I'm going to see your victory. I'm going to see your victory. Why? For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see your victory. I'm going to see your victory. For the
coronavirus is just temporary. We are about to see the hand of God move, intervene. We pray to God so that He will intervene in our situation. We pray to God so that He will intervene in our situation, in this crisis. Amen. I will repeat this before I end. If you are watching right now and I'm talking to you right now, I'm talking to you if you are watching right now. Pakisum yung camera, bro. If you are watching right now, come on, please, pakisum yung camera. If you are watching on live stream right now, I want you to listen to this. This is very important. Let it be known in this crisis that your faith, our faith did not waver. Our love for God did not affect. No, hindi na apektuhan itong virus na to. Yung paglilingkod natin sa Lord. How we serve the Lord. We won't allow this crisis. Let it be known in this history because this, this, this pandemic, this is a global this global pandemic, it will be made known in this generation na hindi ikaw nagduda sa kaya ang gawin ng Lord. Hindi ka tumalikod sa iyong pag-ibig sa Panginoon. Lalo kang naglingkod sa Panginoon. Hindi ka nag-doubt sa kaya ang gawin ng Panginoon. Because this is just temporary. The God that we are serving is a permanent God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let it be known in the history of this pandemic that we did not drift away. We did not turn our back to God. But we beat this together as a family, as a church, as a nation. That we pray for the mercy of God. That we are humble ourselves before the Lord. That we pray so that God will intervene. We can beat this together. This is just a preparation. Proclaim, declare positive words. Biblical words. Words with substance that encourage people to lead. That encourage people to face the challenge and to overcome the challenge. And it's about time to perform. It's about time to show up. Not to be silent. Not to be lenient. We should do more in reaching people, reaching our disciples, continuing discipling them, preaching the gospel to the people. We can beat, we can beat this together. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord the best clap right now. Come on. You can do better than that.